Hey, Cody Rawl here coming to you from Washington, D.C. I've actually got the Washington Monument in the background here. Let me jump out of the shot so I can show you it real quick. So there it is. I'm going to move around just to make sure the camera is uh, focused back in on me. But um, yeah, coming to you from Washington, D.C. Been living here for almost a year now. And uh, it's a very inspiring place to be, obviously, a lot of stuff going on. And um, today I wanted to talk to you about something that's near and dear to my heart, magnetic encephalography. Well, what is magnetic encephalography, you might ask? If you've ever seen someone getting their brain waves analyzed, say they have a bunch of electrodes on their head, um, what you probably have seen in the past was EEG, electroencephalography. EEG measures the electrical impulses sent by families of neurons. And this has furthered our understanding of uh, electrical activity that happens in the brain when people are going through various cognitive tasks. If you remember back to high school physics, whenever an electrical impulse is sent, it creates a tangential magnetic wave. And magnetic encephalography measures those magnetic waves. So the advantage with magnetic encephalography is that with electroencephalography, when the electrical impulse is fired, it actually gets distributed because the brain is bathed in cerebral spinal fluid, the skull, and uh, even the skin, the scalp skin on top of the skull uh, can conduct electricity. So this dissipates where the signal is coming from, making it difficult to triangulate where exactly the neurons are firing. The cool thing about magnetic encephalography is that the magnetic waves are not dispersed nearly as much as the electric waves which allows us to triangulate better where it's coming from. They call this spatial resolution. So with magnetic encephalography, we have better spatial resolution, allowing us to, uh, to understand where the oscillation patterns are coming from. Now, when I say oscillation patterns, I mean firing frequencies of the neurons. We've seen a lot of different uh, oscillation patterns over the past hundred years or so that EEG has been available and now we can take a look with magnetic encephalography and have a better understanding of where these are coming from. Now the best spatial resolution that we have uh, is fMRI actually. They use an MRI machine to track the metabolism that's actually happening in their brain and it allows us to understand where processes are happening but the bad part about it is that it only tracks the metabolism the neurons have already fired and now you're picking up their metabolic activity. It's difficult to translate that into actual further understanding of how the brain is actually functioning in real time. Now the good thing about magnetic encephalography is that we said that it has pretty good spatial resolution at least compared to the electroencephalography. But with uh, magnetic encephalography we have way better temporal resolution than the fMRI. This because the machine is actually picking up the magnetic waves that are generated by the neurons real time rather than just picking up the metabolism like the fMRI. What, it, what can we do with this? Well, we've seen some amazing oscillation patterns in the brain allowing us to understand at least somewhat of what's going on. Um, there's been a lot of interest in things like gamma oscillations which run from about 30 to 90 hertz. And People have been tracking these oscillation patterns because they seem to have a lot to do with cognition, memory, and perception. Um, one of the really interesting things that's already come out of this research is that there appear to be slower oscillation patterns in deeper brain structures that literally change the gamma oscillations that are occurring. Now, if you remember, I said that gamma oscillations are involved in cognition, memory, and perception. And the lower frequency oscillation patterns are often changed things like mood and or other things that affect your daily uh, resting state. And the fact that these slower oscillations can literally change the more high frequency oscillations is really interesting. I mean, what does that mean? To me, and I might be extrapolating a lot here, but we know that your mood, your ability to uh, be happy throughout the day or focus on the things that make you happy really changes your perception. It's really a glass half full, glass half empty sort of way of living. And it's almost like we have this first objective evidence of emotional patterns 
literally changing the information that is coming into the brain. I mean, imagine if we could link these slower wave oscillation patterns like alpha waves to certain moods and we're able to understand how this literally changes the gamma wave oscillations which are causing cognition, perception, and memory. Does this mean that actually how you conduct yourself throughout the day and how you control your moods and emotions literally changes your understanding of the world around you? And I really like magnetic encephalography because it can give us tons of objective evidence not only in neuroscience to understand things like I've already talked about, but in understanding different patterns between different people that have different syndromes or diseases and being able to, again, understand how the brain functions, allowing us to get more objective data and understand ourselves that much better and really push ourselves to the next potential of human potential. So I'm gonna be talking a lot more about magnetic encephalography. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about things like transmagnetic stimulation too and a lot of other technology that's developing right now that is completely revolutionizing our understanding of the brain. So funny story about uh, filming in Washington DC, especially around the White House, you have to be a little bit careful. I did just get visited by a Secret Service and uh, it was funny though, they were really cool. <laughs> talked about Alaska and a lot of different other things. I guess once they realized that I wasn't psychotic when I was uh, talking about the brain admitting magnetic waves <laughs> near, the, near the White House, uh, they were really cool. But yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in this week. Um, talk to you next time.